Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. After leaving New York City and his role as Rafael Santiero on Another World Behind, Les Brandt started booking guest starring roles in numerous primetime shows, in national commercials, and in print campaigns. In commercials, he worked on some of the most recognizable brands, including a project opposite Academy Award winner Julianne Moore for L'Oreal. He also booked the coveted Old Spice role, The Legend, for a series of spots which showed his versatile and comedic range. Les enjoys taking on physically challenging parts with roles in Ninja Apocalypse, David and Goliath, Andre Foster, and Compass Rose. Lisa Brenna started working in daytime television on Guiding Light, All My Children, and then as the infamous Maggie Corey on Another World. She appeared on the big screen as Anne Howard in the revolutionary war drama, The Patriot. Since then, she has gone on to star in many, many indie films such as Cesar Chavez, Finding Home, What Boys Want, Bad Samaritan, and The Remains. Lisa has guest starred in numerous television series such as All Three CSIs, Criminal Minds, The Mentalist, Leverage, Perception, and Rizzoli and Isles. She has produced and starred in the romantic comedy Say My Name and the upcoming apocalyptic sci-fi film the Deal. Kevin McClatchy has worked extensively in film and television for over 20 years. His film credits include Love and Other Drugs, Unstoppable, and The Lodge. On television, Kevin spent two years playing Nick Hudson on Another World and had recurring roles on Guiding Light, One Life to Live, and General Hospital as well. His primetime credits include guest starring roles on NCIS, ER, The X-Files, That 70s Show, and The Practice, as well as roles in the television movie The Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Miners Story and the PBS miniseries The War That Made America. He joined the acting and directing faculty at Ohio State University in 2013, where he continues to teach today and just finished one of his classes. In June 2014, he played Prospero in a groundbreaking adaptation of The Tempest at the Royal Shakespeare Company. The show was directed by Kelly Hunter, and this interactive production involving children with autism grew out of Miss Hunter's pioneering Shakespeare and autism project, which Kevin has been a part of since 2012. His other theater credits include Red, Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, and Almost Maine. Please welcome to the locker room, Les Brandt, Lisa Brenner, and Kevin McClatchy. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you all for being here. Uh, you all, you know, said it's been 20 years since you have laid eyes on each other. Man. Mm -hmm. it's, uh... when, when, you, when you think of the, the, the folks here today, what pops to mind, Lisa? Oh my gosh, I was, my head has been flooded with memories of being on set and the crazy things that went on backstage and just what was going on in my personal life and how it was brought into the studio and how we were just such a big family. It was, it was an incredible time. It really was. There was so much love and support emotionally and well, I, I could tell when, when we couldn't get you guys to do this the first time I could tell that the three of you really wanted to be together Les what comes to mind when you think of the folks here today uh Kevin loved basketball <laughs> and he loved he, he loved his books he's an intellectual uh and it, it, it's uh, apropos for him to be have a backdrop of uh books right behind him he's a real smart a very intelligent guy I respect highly and uh, Lisa is just one powerhouse of talent. Uh, she's always been that way since I've known her. Uh, and apparently she's continuing to do just that. Uh, congratulations to you both. Um, I've fortunately have had the, uh, the great fortune to, uh, to keep up with uh, Kevin over the years. We've met up a few times here, here in LA uh, and uh, I've seen him work with his uh, theater company. Uh, he invited me out one time uh, a few years ago and uh, just jaw dropping, impressive, on uh, his ability, his heart, and how he's he's been able to um, uh, uh, meld his uh, his his brain and his heart coherence, and with the arts. Congratulations, Kevin. Thanks, man. Thanks. Mm -hmm. and, and for you, Kevin. 
Oh man, seeing yeah, like Les and I have uh, kept in touch. We saw each other a few years ago, but you know, with with Lisa, I'll, I'll start like the memories flooding back. I mean, I think that the thing that sticks out is not only all the emotional support and everything that you talked about, Lisa, but just playing. Like it was so much fun to be in a scene with you, to be in a scene with Les, because you guys were up for anything. And we could play. It was really, just really fun. I mean, the two of the two of the greatest scene partners I've ever had in terms of uh, of just going for it and and being able to to play and be in the moment. And that was uh, I started thinking about that. And so I think about you know, individual moments and scenes and how much fun that was. And uh, and then I thought about how all three of us are now parents, which is uh, <laughs> just phenomenal, man. You know, that's just like. It's the best, right? And I just couldn't be happier for Les. I mean, I know, Lisa, you've been a parent for a while, but Les is a new parent, and uh, I kind of, I kind of envy him for that. And then there are other parts of it that I don't envy. <laughs> most of it I envy. Most of it I envy, man. I couldn't be happier for you, Les. And, uh, That's so funny. Well, when I started promoting this, uh, the Another World publicist who, you know, I worked for P&G on the other shows, but Gillian Strum reached out and said, a talented group of actors with great chemistry. And she's so excited that you uh, are here today and sends her love to you. Yeah, um, what what do you remember? Take take me back to auditioning, screen test for for the for the roles that you played on Another World. Lisa, if you want to go first. Well, it's funny you say that. I actually am not even sure. I I was on Guiding Light before, and I I'm pretty sure. Gosh, this is so many years ago, and I think they needed to recast Maggie pretty quickly. And I, I don't even know if I screen tested or auditioned. It was one of those like really quick casting things just because I had worked with the executive producer before, um, I think. <laughs> I don't really uh, remember. Because you, 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 pl you played a young Vanessa, right? On Guiding Light, yes. Maeve, Kin Maeve Kincaid's yes. role. Yes. Yeah, I was on Guiding. Uh, gui uh, first, it was um, All My Children, then Guiding Light, and then Another World. And I'm pretty sure Jill Farron Phelps was the executive producer, and she kind of brought, I think, the three of us in. I think we were all Jill's people, I think. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. amazing. And by the way, Jill, she also... Um, she posted on my Instagram. She's so excited about this and sends love to oh, all of us. So and she actually yeah. lives down the block from me. So we see each other walking our dogs every once in a while, yeah, which is awesome. amazing. Oh, I, love, I love her. Talk about a small world. Well, one, yes. one of our fans, Jared, was asking, what was it like working with Joe? What, oh, what, yes. what do you remember, Kevin, about Joe? Yeah, uh, you know, Jill was... Um, I mean, she was incredibly influential for me. I, I had, uh, hadn't really, I'd only done a couple of uh, student films and uh, a lot of theater. And then I auditioned for the contract role. It was like the first time I auditioned for, uh, you know, on camera for um, Hart Jessup. Oh, on Guiding Light. Oh, yeah, Leonard Stab's role, right? So I was- Yeah, after his injury. It was yeah. It was before his injury. No, it was before his before when they were casting it. I um, oh okay. I auditioned for it, and I went to the you know I went to the screen test, and I was like surrounded by these like four like unbelievably beautiful men, right? And then there was like this pasty white <laughs> Irish guy, and I was like, <laughs> here, right? Uh, and and the screen test went really well. Um, and then I was walking down the hall and I remember, I, I'll never forget this, Jill, she looked at me, she said, we'll be seeing you again, All right? And and I was like, you know, yeah, I thought it was just like show business stuff. And then a couple of months later they called and uh, they offered me the role of Vinnie Morrison. Uh, and that that was, you know, it was supposed to be like three days and it turned into like three, three and four months. And that and that led directly to uh, to Jill you know, bringing me to another world. And like, like Lisa, I didn't screen test. I had like this three episode audition. Like, so it was like, I, they were gonna let me do three episodes. And then if I, uh, 
you know, if they if I had some like undetected facial tick that they hadn't seen before, then maybe they <laughs> have that. But, uh, but the, then was, they ditch you. <laughs> then they, yeah, then they ditch me. Uh, but Jill, you know, Jill was Jill was incredible. I mean, she gave gave us so much freedom, and she loves actors, right? She just loves actors, and you can feel that every time you're on the set with her. And uh, obviously, she uh, she thought I was you know thought I was good, and thought Lisa was good, and uh, thought Les was good, and thought, you know brought us on and has. Has you know had, had me on One Life to Live and General Hospital as well. So that was uh, wow. yeah. She's been uh, she's been a great champion of mine. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you remember your first day stepping on set in Bay City? Uh, Less. Yeah. Oh um, no, <laughs> actually, <laughs> I have to first start off by saying I have to. Um, oh oh, Jill, a big apology. Uh, you know because you know when I was starting back in the in the mid nineties, I, I was like a bull in a china store. I had all this energy and strength and and uh, moxie, and uh, I just uh, I didn't know what to do with it. I was I was trying to fine tune my craft, and uh, uh, and I learned a lot. Uh, I had just gotten out of the, uh, the academy there. And, um, but actually the first day I think is, uh, when, uh, I jumped out of the bushes and, and, and grabbed Lisa. That was like, the, I'm like, uh, you know, I was lurking. I was always lurching and lurking. And, uh, uh and I just, uh, yeah, Les, I think you and I led, led the league in, in lurking behind doors. And, and, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So my first day was just like, you know, the kidnap. And, uh, oh, yeah. I Lisa, remember. Do you remember yours? I don't. I don't. I, I kind of remember um, a conglomeration of, um, gosh, I can't even remember his name, Carl and Rachel, the grandparents. Uh, I remember. Vic, Victoria Wyndham. Yes. And yes. Charles Keating. Charles yep. Keating. Charles yeah. Keating was incredible. He just, I mean, talk about loving actors. He just took me under his wing and showed me the way. He was incredible and just made us laugh more than anyone. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think they were the first people I was with on my first day on set. Wow. Uh, Donna just said, Les, yes. That was your first scene, grabbing Maggie from behind. Oh. Donna! <laughs> <laughs> I love you, kid. So funny. Um, and Kevin, do you remember your first day? Yeah, uh, I, I do, actually. It was because, I remember because it was, um, it was a, 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 a joke with, um, with Kale, Kale Brown and, and David Forsyth because I had actually, I had replaced uh, an actor, Justin Chambers, who went on obviously to do Grey's Anatomy. And so it was a little strange, right? It was a little strange knowing that I had done that. You know, it's obviously, you, you never want to be in that position. Um, but the scene, as I remember, it was, uh, you know, the episode before, Justin had been in the hospital bed and then it was like, then I was in the hospital bed. The next episode, you know, like it happens. <laughs> right, right. right, yes. Totally and, like it happens in so Yeah, and Kale yeah. Brown did this <laughs> fly little thing. Like the, when we shot the scene, he walked in and he, he looked at me like, <laughs> thing like, and then he went on with the scene just like to register that I was a different actor. And uh, <laughs> it was like, it was cool though. But it was, it was a little nerve wracking, um, but it was great. It was great. Kale Brown was, uh, Obviously, an ideal person to have uh, play play my dad, and, and David Forsythe is you know sort of legendary actor who was just amazing to work with. As uh, I got to work with him a lot, so it was cool too. That's awesome. Lisa said that um, Charles Keating sort of took her under her wing. Was there anybody when you Les and Kevin when you both arrived who took you two under your wing? Help, not necessarily took you under the wing, but showed you the ropes. Absolutely. Uh, Tom, Tom, uh, uh, Tommy point. was always, he was always there for me and he always gave me a lot of insight. Uh, a lot of people did. Um, uh, Donna for sure. Uh, on my first ride over to the studio, she, she laid it down, uh, uh with a lot of tough love. I remember that. Um, 
Anna Stewart, you mean, or yeah, <laughs> Anna Stewart. Anna Stewart. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, um, uh, Tom Priceless. Uh, I haven't heard from him since, and um, I hope he's doing well. Uh, and Charles, um, you know, he he we we were kind of very similar in a lot of ways uh, with a, a personality uh, and uh, and the way he the way he was. And um, we, we had some really good conversations about um, life that, uh, that, I, that, I st that still resonate with me. So um, he, he's, he's greatly missed and uh, a lot of great memories. Yeah. That's awesome. If, if I'm not mistaken, and I haven't seen Tom Eplin in years either, but I also think like the three of you, he is a father these days. So <laughs> good for him. And, and Kevin, for you. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I didn't work as much with Charles, but when I, I when I was able to talk with him, he he was really just sort of you know gave great great insight into what we were doing. But the, the other people, Tommy Tommy Eplin definitely, and Jensen Jensen Buchanan uh, mm -hmm. was uh, instrumental in you know frankly calming me down. Right, because I was a little excitable there in the beginning, and uh, sort of giving it the old, uh, giving it the old Jim Carrey, Nathan Lane treatment on camera, and I just had to sort of, I had to really just like kind of learn a little bit. Um, and Jensen, not only did we talk about uh, working, but she was obviously um, uh, someone to watch. Watch, you know, her work was uh, stellar, so I was able to watch her. So yeah, Jensen was Jensen and Tommy. Awesome. Well, let's go back a little. Who or what influenced each of you to become an actor? Lisa? Insanity? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I decided when I was seven years old, it was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Was it a movie <laughs> or something? Or Well, was it was Annie. It was the big okay. Annie explosion of the 80s. <laughs> and I decided I was going to be Annie. And so I did sing, nothing serious, but my mom brought me into the city on an open call and I kept making it down to the cut, down, 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 till there was about six of us. And Marty Charnin came into oh, the yeah. room and said, it's a traveling company. And if you're not ready to commit your life for the next year, parents and children, please leave. And my mom never thought it was gonna go this far. And she said, we got to go. I'm, I'm a mom. I have two other kids at home. We can't just leave. So I said, all right, fine, we'll leave. But I'm doing this for the rest of my life. Wow. And wow. I did. I still am. <laughs> and there's nothing that makes me happier. That's awesome. And that's determination at seven yeah. years old. Let's oh, just... yeah. I have no idea where it came from. And I really believe that it is a calling, that like once you get this calling, there's nothing else you could do. And so, yeah, still doing it. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Les? Uh, real uh, clearly, um, as a child, too, uh, growing up with seven siblings, and uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, my mother was always under a lot of stress. And uh, one thing that I found uh, that took her out of those um, uh, high-pressure moments was uh, my ability to make her laugh or uh, <laughs> just alter her emotional state and the way she was feeling. And uh, it, it, it matters to me because uh, I, I only like to see the people that I love uh, being in a really good state. And uh, I found that I, as, a, as, a, as an artist, you have that ability and um, we can make them laugh, we can make them cry, we can, we can, we do so much. And um, it's like Lisa said, there's, no, there's nothing else uh, I'd rather do, uh, I wanna do. Uh, my heart's driven by it. It's my soul's passion, and um, I'm happy to continue to do it. That's great. And Kevin? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I had always wanted to do it, but I didn't really, I didn't really commit to it uh, until I was a little older. But like, I just remember watching Monty Python and <laughs> just being like, "Wow, if I could sort of elicit the response in people that they elicit in me, just that." And uh, I remember there was a movie called Coming Home. It was a, a Vietnam, Vietnam War veteran. It was uh, Jane Fonda, John Voight, and Bruce Dern. 
and I watched that probably younger than I should have watched it, frankly. Um, but I was I was just completely floored by by that. And it's the same thing. Like if, I was like, man, I would I would just love to be able to to tell a story in that way. And but I I, I put it all away uh, through college. You know, I I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't really start. I didn't make the decision to act until I was almost 25 years old, and uh, I was out of college for a few years. And then I just, it, you know, you get to that point where it's like either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And I couldn't not do it, so I just quit my job in Philadelphia and moved to New York, having never taken a class, never really seen a professional production of a play, and then just started. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, That's also determination. I mean, to do that, you know, with no training. Yeah, or no... also a healthy dose of insanity, just like what Lisa said. <laughs> Everybody in my family was like, they looked at me like they had just gotten a shot of Novocaine. What? Yeah, but they were great. They were great. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what, what What was the best part of acting with? each other what oh what do you remember about having each other as a scene partner well i i just have to say just what you're seeing right now we would <laughs> laugh all the time <laughs> we had so much fun we had so much fun but and at the same time we were all like right out of college i was actually still in college but we were all just like loved what we were doing and we just tried to make the most out of every scene and we were constantly backstage rehearsing and rehearsing and let's try it this way and let's try it that way and you know as Kevin said before you know we would just we were up for anything and it was just such a like a creative amazing atmosphere that you don't really think of when you think of soap operas like soap operas have such a bad reputation acting and creative wise but the truth of the matter is another the world job oh my gosh job. we were in brooklyn the best <laughs> new york actors mostly theater actors so happy to be working just getting to do this every single day and just uh, living every and, moment with it and this was your largest role to date for all three yeah yeah. In soap operas, you mean? At at the time when you got oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The, at the largest. So so what do you think you each learned, you know, working in Bay City that you've taken everywhere else? Man, um, I'll tell you, it was uh, it was a great education in in trusting myself because I, I know that for a long time, I just tried too hard, you know, and, which I guess is a, is like a lovely kind of problem to have that, which, because it means you care, you care about it. And thinking back on it, you know, just thinking about you know, doing this and thinking back on it, I realized just how much I, 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 I how many times I tried too hard and uh, like pushed for a result instead of simply just allowing the moment to occur, right. Allowing, thing to happen and that was probably the biggest thing i took away from that experience uh because i had people with me like les and lisa who made it easy just to trust the moment right to be in the moment because you know any sort of uh improvisational moment that happened it was like never denied it was always accepted and run with especially with these two and Les, for you what do you think you you took with you well uh i think uh Kevin said that on my behalf because I never saw him feel like he was uh, <laughs> having the having those issues. But, but uh, I certainly um, expressed it. Uh, I expressed my frustrations of how how passionately I was trying to be the best I could be, and when I couldn't get there, if I felt that I couldn't get there, um, I was a very uh, expressive uh, individual. Uh, not so much these days. I learned how to contain it more, but yeah, it was a passion that I wanted to be the best I could. Jill brought me on to do something and, uh, and I, I loved it. And, and I was really trying to be the best. And if, if I, if I couldn't, if I couldn't reach it, if I couldn't make it, um, I was really hard on myself. And that's one thing I've learned how not to do these days is, um, is to, 
just not take things so seriously, continue to do what we uh, what we were nurturing uh, 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 intuitively as, as new young uh, actors, just to have fun and to continue to do that. That's very important uh, these days. And, and I've, I learned that. Um, and uh, it was a great experience. Uh, the one thing I love doing is, is always keeping these guys on their toes with uh, improvisation. I'd say change things up a little bit. And we had so much fun. And a lot of those interactions we had were real. They weren't so much scripted. They were just real, real laughs and uh, uh, real interactions. And uh, it was awesome. Well, it sounds like Jill trusted the three of you. I mean, she hired the three of you. She liked the three of you. You know, she put her faith, which is mm -hmm. ni nice to have in an executive producer, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Lisa, for you, what, what do you think you've taken? Well, it's funny because whenever I'd get stressed about having to learn lines or whatever it is in a scene, <clears throat> what I'm working on now, I remember how hard we worked on this show, how we would do a full day of 60 pages, <laughs> come home at night, and then have to learn another 60 pages <laughs> to be ready for our car pickup at 6 a.m. the next morning. I mean, I, I don't think I ever worked as hard in my life. I remember one day, I was so innocent, I'm getting my makeup done and to Kevin, um, makeup artist, Kevin, I remember oh, Kevin seeing, Bennett. Yes. yes. <laughs> Kevin Bennett. I remember just innocently saying to him, wow, you know, like I'm having to go through a lot of emotions every day. I hope this doesn't like make me crazy or anything. <laughs> he just burst out <laughs> laughing. He's like, girl, <laughs> this That's is just the show. beginning. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But right. yeah, it was it was hard work and emotional work. I mean, when else when else in your life are you going to get kidnapped and married and fake mm -hmm. pregnancies and deaths and like you name it? <laughs> we had to go on through a daily it. basis. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and we wanted basis. every moment to be real. <laughs> yeah, we, that, that's so funny because there was a little bit of naivete about that, right? About like, what is this and there was also like what Les was talking about. We used to skirt almost getting in trouble for changing so much of the dialogue or adding dialogue, <laughs> right? And not really telling anybody in dry rehearsal, like the rehearsal where they're timing the scenes. And then you'd save some like little nugget you came up with for the first take <laughs> and see what happens. And uh, every once in a while, someone would be like, yeah, you know, maybe you just stick to the script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would push that a little bit. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. I remember uh, someone would get on the intercom and be like, "Hey, can I? Hey, Les, could you? Uh, could you just not say that?" <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting choice, but please never do that again. Yeah. But what yeah. you did, just don't do it. God, God came over the loudspeaker and said, yeah. "Don't do that." Yeah. That's funny. All right. I mean, Lisa, you mentioned stories. Do you have a favorite storyline together or with somebody else that stands oh, out? I know, it's 20 years. I know it's a long time ago. <laughs> well, yeah, just well, as I was talking, I thought about that whole fake pregnancy thing. And I remember um, I, I, like, I was using a towel or Maggie was using a towel to fake the pregnancy. And then I remember throwing it. <laughs> at Kevin and I remember my aunt told me wow you really threw the towel in <laughs> like that's all you got from that, <laughs> that whole <scene. laughs> yeah I mean gosh we went through so much there's so many storylines it's so fun if you go on YouTube and you could see old things I'll show my daughter she's like mom I can't believe it or just not even remembering I said those words it's yeah. such a weird experience mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I've, I've interviewed footage. a lot of actors who are like, you know, the fans can remember the lines word for word. They remember, the, you know, when it happened, all of that. Kevin, I'm curious, now that you're teaching uh, at Ohio State, what do you impart to students from that experience, do you think? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, part of it is what I was talking about earlier about trusting yourself. Uh, especially on camera, you know, because uh, rather than like giving a performance, you just have to have 
you know, that experience, whatever that moment is, right? Um, yeah, that and being like unfailingly looking for the truth, right? And not and not giving up until you uh, until you find that until you find that way in. And then, you know, obviously, the most important thing is listening, really listening, mm-hmm. right? and you know, crafting opportunities to allow the students to to really explore that uh, in in a way that's as close to a professional experience as possible. Mm -hmm. Are there actors who you truly admire today, Lisa? From uh, there are many, any, 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 (laughs) who who were some of, you know, the, Oh my gosh. Well, Diane Keaton is my all time favorite. Oh my God. I mean, I, I love actors. I have so I lists and lists of people (laughs) I've worked with that you've never heard of. You know, just these hardworking actors that are constantly on TV, but just you know aren't stars. Or well, um, let's flip that. Who who would you love to work with? Is Diane Keaton one of them? Oh my God, I love her so much. Bette Midler is one of my favorite humans in the world that I've never met, but one day we will, you know, have yeah. a put it out know, into the world. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last for you, who would you like to work with? Uh, yeah, long long list as well, but uh, um, I, I, Matthew McConaughey, he's uh, he's just a real dynamo, very dynamic actor. Uh, uh, really works works it uh, on the comedy side. Uh, 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 Jim Carrey, uh, I like his choices. Uh, I just like he's just really uh, off the mark. Uh, I like that about him. Uh, just to name a couple. Mm-hmm. Kevin. Yeah, there's so many. I, I would love, you know, to to work with uh, and share the screen with somebody like Viola Davis, who's who's mm. j- just such a you know a force of nature. She literally knocks it out every time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and yeah, Viola Davis, and you know, I think um, I think Kevin Bacon and I could play brothers. Oh, uh, could. Uh, <laughs> totally be interesting. Um, yeah, I I was able to cross one of those names off my bucket list. Uh, even though we didn't share an actual scene together, we were kind of we were in the in the scene together uh, for like a week. I got to uh, be on the set and have actual significant conversations with John Malkovich. Wow. That was, uh, I mean, they say you know never never meet your heroes or your le- the legends. They'll disappoint you. He didn't disappoint, man. He was he was so great. Uh, when we were doing it. it was extremely wicked, shockingly evil and vile that that film. And uh, just being on the set with him for six days was amazing. He's done everything. He's literally done everything he could do. And, mm. he taught, and he was free with the stories. He's a, like a master storyteller too. He he has done done everything. Well, there's a lot of fans here, uh, you know, spreading the Another World love. Lisa says, Another World was my first love and first soap. I remembered watching with my mom as a young child, still in my heart. Um, and somebody said, Less the Lurker. Leo, <laughs> Leonora says, Everyone looks amazing and happy. And I know she, uh, she had a question earlier any memories of working with victoria windham because i know she was asking earlier um well i i I did a lot of scenes with her because she played my grandmother and i just i remember she told me as a woman (laughs) she said never hold a purse she refused to have a purse and she felt that it it lessened her as a woman and i found that so interesting she said, every costume designer is going to give you a purse. Don't hold a purse. It will lessen you. And I found that so interesting. And she, uh, she was just so cool. She was just so cool, professional, came in, did her stuff, like nailed it and left. Like, amazing. That's such an interesting line. I've never heard anyone say yes. that. I found it so interesting, like that a woman always has to, you know, kind of be in the back with her purse. I don't know. I found it interesting and symbolic. And and sort of the, uh, like, a a women's movement uh, line or something, you know. 
like a yeah, strong mom. really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, one of our fans said, you played Vinny, the bigot who got into a fight with David Grant on Guiding Light. Do you remember that? Was that with Monty Sharp? Yeah, that was... Uh... That was like that was an incredible experience. Um, working with Monty Sharp and uh, and Neil Long. Neil Long, yeah, yeah, and Kit. They they basically uh, Monty and Neil basically rewrote all those scenes to make them even more raw and <laughs> and and sort of like challenging to the audience. And you know, I had come obviously I'd come with some notion of what you know what daytime television was, and then. To watch the freedom that uh, that Monty and Nia had, you know, obviously from Jill, to do that, and then we just we would just we just went for it, and it was it was scary and and intense and physical, and it was I was like, wow, this is uh, this is totally different than what I thought daytime television could be. So yeah, I remember that uh, vividly. And, and and that was with Jill, right? You said yeah, Jill. Jill was an executive producer. Yeah, that was a great time at Guiding Light when she she was the EP. Yeah, there were so many great actors on that show. It was it was, it was great. Yeah, Lisa, I, I was trying to remember what was the. Do you remember the scene or the episode of Guiding Light playing young Vanessa? What was that about? Do you remember at all? She had a baby. That was about. She had a baby and maybe. Oh, I think she had to give her baby away at the hospital. Oh, uh, so I wonder if it that was, was Doc. Dinah, which was played by a number of actresses, Paige Turco, Wendy Moniz, um, Gina Tagnoni, and, and stuff. So maybe it was when she gave birth to her. Yeah. Gosh. I'm, you know, I was. Yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> like my memory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my and God. What, what do you remember about All My Children? Oh, well, that was interesting. So it was a recurring guest star. It, my name was Allison Sloan and they, they brought me on and they wanted to see, this was so crazy. I remember I was in my second year of Barnard college and I got this part and they wanted to test out the character first to see the fan reaction. And on the first day my character air aired was the first day of the OJ Simpson trials. And it was wow. completely wow. preempted wow. every one of my scenes. <laughs> wow. And so that happened. And so, yeah, all my children. And, and it never returned during the OJ trial. I mean, so no. basically. I know. Oh, it's just, I could not believe it. But, you know, when the universe, you know, has a different path for you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have that path. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's crazy. And Les, what do you recall about working with Julianne Moore on that L'Oreal campaign? Uh, she, the way she said my name, she just said it over and over and over again. The way she said <laughs> it, I never heard someone say it that way. I loved it. It's like it was melodic. And it's like she was my friend forever. And uh, I just fell in love with her. She, she, There's so many reasons why she is where she is and does what she does. Uh, but a, a, lot, a, a big part of it is it's, it's what's coming from the inside of her yeah. out. Wow. She's truly a good person. Um, and and just started amazing. like the three of you. She started on As the World Turns. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, even backstage, there was always etchings and uh, carvings in the, into the, um, uh, the backdrops from uh, like Anne Hayes. It was like she had some etchings back there. People would etch their there i was here at some point and uh on the back of the sets you're talking yeah yeah so just um you know, just a lot of great memories and um yeah it's i mean not a not a bad uh commercial to have for l'oreal and oh bad, yeah and that not was, a bad per it was person really amazing and, and you know i got to meet everybody uh, of course uh, helen Marin. Um, just a, a really a brilliant lady, very sophisticated and, and uh, respectful. Um, uh, there, Vanessa, I just met like so many. I was the only guy, the only actor on that on that uh, set. Uh, with uh, uh, there were three Oscar-winning actresses, and then the three amazing. Well, Vanessa, and um, it was just a, just an awesome one of the 
many amazing jobs that I get just uh, blessed to do. And um, yeah, but thanks for highlighting that, Alan. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate that. Well, it's, it's awesome. And Lisa, you starred in a number of primetime series. Do you have a favorite role that you've done in primetime? Um, I think, what you know, just as you say that, I, I would say the one that stands out for me would probably be Criminal Minds, just because it was so hard. It was so hard. Um, what, what, what made made it so it hard? A, it, I had to do fight training, and I was kidnapped. Oh, I've kidnapped again. <laughs> <laughs> I, drew, I drew on my day from another it's world. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I had a whole, you know, I remember I, it was right during Christmas break and that's what it was. I got the flu and then I had to be on set, you know, sick and have fight training. And it, it just, I remember that just being really hard and I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of that episode. It's a really great episode. Um, but yeah, probably that one. And Kevin, do you have a favorite primetime role or movie? Um, yeah, I think uh when i did uh i did ncis and um i got to work like e exclusively with uh, terry o'quinn oh yeah uh, from lost right and that... lost, and lost. lost. Yeah. yeah and uh that was i mean that was just phenomenal uh, being able to work with him and it was a really cool episode and uh, it turned out really well uh, the other one that was really interesting was Remember doing that show, Les, remember doing that show, Pacific Blue? Yes, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Like the cops on bikes and shorts. And, uh, <laughs> and I had no idea that Les was in the, it was two episodes. It was like two episodes, and I didn't know Les was in it. And I, I showed up at Venice Beach, and I looked at the call sheet, and Les's name is on there. And I was like, mm. I went, like, running over to craft services to find him. I was like, where is he? Where's Les? Where's Les? I finally found him. That was awesome. Was awesome. Is is that where mm -hmm. you knew he would be? Was craft service? <laughs> <laughs> I, knew that was where I would go. <laughs> so I was just like I, I would go where the food is. So I thought maybe he'd be there. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> well, Kevin, I have to ask what what um, prompted your transition to teaching and and talk about what it's like being able to sort sort of impart all that wisdom to students. Yeah, I um. Thank you for assuming that it's all that wisdom. Right? It's probably like, <laughs> a, like an IV drip, right? <laughs> Not a good day. Um, yeah, when uh, when my daughter was born, back in like 2001, uh, Lisa, my wife, and I were in um, in uh, in LA, and you know, Lisa's from Columbus, and so we 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 wanted to figure out a way to be near, to, you know, to let my in-laws be part of my daughter growing up right to be able to like be near her family so uh we bought a house here in columbus and then you know we sort of re determined that we would be like half a year in columbus half a year in la and, and just work that out which we did and then uh once my daughter uh aaron started school you know full time i could we couldn't do that so uh, you know i was like okay i'm in columbus I started doing theater and uh, I would go to LA or New York for opportunities uh, as they came up. In fact, I spent a year, uh, I didn't tell my agent that I was uh, in Columbus. So for a year and a half, he would call. So like, he'd call like seven o'clock Eastern time and say, I have an audition for you know NCIS at noon tomorrow. And I, can you make it? And I'd be like, yeah, man. And I'd jump on a plane. <laughs> And go out, wow. and do it, and then come back. And then the pressure got too. I I crumbled like a house of cards. One time he called and I said, "I'm in Columbus, man. I can't." <laughs> He's like, what? "That's tough. Yeah. That's tough." Yeah, but uh, but then I started teaching a class here, you know, privately, and I was like, "Oh, it's pretty. I, I feel like I'm pretty good at this." And uh, uh, my wife Lisa brought up the prospect of going back to school, going into MFA program. And at first I was like, I'm not going back to school. It's crazy. I was like, take a look at my IMDB page. Why would I go back to school? I was like, I was a complete jerk about it. And uh, <laughs> and Lisa, who's like obviously smarter than me, asked again. And then I looked at the program and I couldn't believe it. Uh, Jimmy Bohr was on the faculty. 
Oh, we, were in, we had oh, happened my gosh. in some fashion to be in the same town. And Jimmy was, you know, he was assistant guy, uh, casting director on Guiding Light, and then obviously our casting director yeah. on the world. And I was like, oh, wow. well, let, me take a, let me take a look at this. And my training had been great, uh, but it had all been scene study, you know, because I started late and I'd never taken a voice class or movement class or anything. And when I looked at it, I was like, okay, this will give me the opportunity to teach at a university, right? Because you need an MFA. And so I said, all right, I'll go to I'll go to grad school at Ohio State. And it was it was an incredible decision. So you get all these opportunities, and we just and the university started a partnership with the Royal Shakespeare Company. And I became one of the primary recipients of that uh, of that partnership. And it just it changed everything. And it happened that a uh, faculty position, Jimmy was leaving and uh, that faculty position opened up and they did a nationwide search. And uh, I was lucky enough to, to get the job. And it's now it's, uh, it's great. Uh, I, I, I teach, I'm sort of immersed in stuff that I'm really interested in. And I still get to you know pursue my acting opportunities as well. And you know I do stuff like sort of transformative stuff for, for myself, like the Shakespeare and autism and doing Shakespeare and, uh, and veterans outreach as well. So, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's turned out great. That's awesome. Well, I want to ask about parenthood. All three of you are <laughs> parents. Les is a new, a new parent. How has fatherhood changed your life? Uh, well, first, uh, I heard a little a saying that says little hands, little feet, little sleep. Uh, <laughs> wow. I, I'm in still, I'm still in zombie mode. Um, like I my, my, my biorhythms haven't, uh, 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 balanced out yet, but, um, uh, I was saying she's earlier, what she's seven months or something. She's six and a half months wow. and her name is Citrine Estrella. And, um, uh, she's super smart. Uh, I, I love every nanosecond. I'm learning so much from, some little being that knows no thing conceptually, but uh, is just an intuitive cellular uh, powerhouse. And uh, I'm just, it's a magnificent thing. And I've only just uh, heard people say about how it's changed their lives. And I've heard that so many times and it's always the same way. And there's never really any depth to when people say it's just changed my life. And it, I found myself saying the same thing. It just, it just changed my life without really understanding the magnitude of how it is. Um, but uh, uh, I'm just blessed. You can't spell blessed without my name in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> this is even more so now. So uh, um, well, it's the happiest and, and time I, of my life. I got a beautiful wife. She's incredibly smart. Like Kevin said, Lisa is. Um, you know, you know when things align. Um, planetarily or universally you just go with the flow rigidity in life it can break you but when you bend it just flows and that's what's happening right now and and this all happened during the pandemic is yes, it yes sir <laughs> unbelievable yeah so there there is a bright light on on something so dark so <laughs> yeah <laughs> and lisa you have two 15 year olds I have a 15-year-old and a 9-year-old. And a 9-year-old. Um, yes, and two is girls. one of them following in your footsteps, I hear? Unfortunately, yes. And <laughs> <laughs> she is way more talented than I could ever wish to be. I feel like she's taken everything good from me and everything good from my husband and, and is just this incredibly smart, talented, strong, confident woman. And yeah, um, thankfully, I think she might be going more towards directing, I'm hoping, and writing. Um, but she's great. She's great. I think it's interesting. I think the three of us all have girls. Yeah. yeah. I, that's very interesting. Must have been some something in the water. <laughs> something in, in the water. In, in the Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> like the bagels. Yeah. In the water. That's great. Yeah. I kind of, it, it's hard to even remember my life before them. And that's, you know, it's like BC. I can't, like, I'm always like, okay, did this happen before Hannah or after Hannah? And that's where I, I see the timeline of my life because I 
couldn't imagine my life without them. Yeah. They're the loves of my life. And my husband too, who's also brilliant, <laughs> just like both of your wives. <laughs> and, and Kevin, for you, how has fatherhood changed your life? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, everyone has touched on it. I mean, it's, it's made me um, more patient uh, after not being patient, I guess is a good way to say it, is learning how to be patient. And, um, and it's, you know, anything, any, anytime it's like when it, something outside of yourself becomes more important, you, you grow as a person, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you learn that much more because you, you stop, it, it stops becoming all about you and becomes about uh, other, other people, other beings, other people's needs and you become more aware, right? And you become more empathetic and you become more sympathetic. And it makes you better. It makes you a better actor. It makes you a better teacher. And it's it's really interesting. You talk about. I I was convinced I had to wait to the perfect time to have children. Right. And again, Lisa, who exhibiting a far higher degree of intelligence than me, was like, "There is no perfect time." And I was like, "Yes, there is." And I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> there was no perfect time, right? And uh, and my kids are, are I mean, they're incredible. Uh, I have a daughter in college um, yeah. and uh, a, a son in uh, going into sixth grade. So they're nine years apart. Uh, and they're, you know, that wasn't like the blueprint, but it worked out uh, incredible. Um, yeah, they're great. They're great. And, and Either of them following in dad's footsteps? Uh, not, not, not currently. Um, okay. So, yeah, they're, they, they got, you know, uh, my daughter has a ton of interests. My daughter in college has a ton of interests uh, that don't have to do with being an actor, which is, which is heartening in some way, right? Like as the, as the parent, you're like, yeah, don't do that. Do something that pays the bills. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, and my son, you know, he's sports obsessed, right? He's total sports fiend, and uh, so it's awesome. That's cool. Well, Les, you have a birthday next week, and uh, I believe the day before your birthday, you have a premiere of a new movie, Untold This Is My Story. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, thanks, Alan. Um, yeah, and we shot this a few years ago, and uh, it's based off of a true story. Uh, of a kidnapping that was kind of uh, in right around the time of uh, Adam Walsh, whenever that happened. Oh, wow. yeah. And um, the director uh, was the child abducted. And uh, oh, wow. Uh, wow. Like, like Lisa always gets uh, the kidnapping role, a uh, kidnapped role. Uh, I'm, always, I'm always like a, the boxer or, or, or the, the gym owner. So I, I played um, the, uh, the, the child who grew up and uh, the director, her, her brother. And um, uh, there's Terry Ivins is in it. Uh, and she's, uh, she, she was my little sister. She's going to be playing the role of uh, the, the young child being abducted. And um, it, it's, um, you know, it's, it's based off of a true story. It's a little heart wrenching. Uh, I, I saw the the rough cut on it uh, a few years ago, so I don't know what changes they've made to it. But I'm looking forward to it, especially uh, uh, right before my birthday, and uh, you know, get out for a little bit. For the past uh, 18 months, my wife and I, because of you know the uh, the pandemic, et cetera, and and all these uh, restrictions, we haven't been out too much. And now with the baby as well, so I think this is going to be our second or our, or our third time out. Uh, well, and you get to celebrate out. your birthday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. Crazy. And it's at the, uh, the 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 man's Chinese theater, uh, oh, cool. September sixth at uh, seven p.m. Yeah, Pacific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, do you have an apocalyptic film coming out, a sci-fi yes. film, The Deal. Can you yes, tell us about Yes, I. Um, uh, the star of it, um, her name is Umali Montano. She wrote. Mm -hmm. She commissioned it uh, based basically on a. Um, a story, it's a love story of a mother and a daughter. Uh, it's about the, the death of her own mother uh, many years ago. And she brought me the script and I brought it to my husband's company and 
so we did it and I have a small crazy part in it. Um, but then during the pandemic, I, I actually started writing myself and I have a feature that we're producing that I wrote and I will be acting in. And then I just directed my first short that I also wrote. So I have this whole new <laughs> thing happening. Wow. Yeah. Which do you, do you like? So you directed the short and I wrote it and wrote it. So yeah. now that you've done acting, directing and the writing part, do you have a preference? You know, I said to my husband, when I came home from directing, I said, this was the best experience of my life. I could not believe that, that I could feel this way. And I will be doing it again, definitely. And I feel like everything I learned as an actor was essential to every single thing that happened that day and speaking to the actors and getting the performances and just having that sensibility is incredible. It's, it's, I just love it. So yeah, that's, it's going to be my new addiction. I can tell you that. <laughs> that's great. Did you um, study? Did you, you know, I, I know, I mean, that's the one thing when, when you act like the three of you have in your onsets and you get to watch other directors yes. and especially like on something like a soap opera where it's five days a week and you have five different directors, you really mm -hmm. get to see a lot of things in action. But yeah. how, for you, how did you? Well, you know, of course there's the acting side of it being on like hundreds of sets, you know, you take on everything, you know, exactly what's going on with camera lenses and the size and the wide shot and the medium and the, the, you, you just learn all of that, the language. And then when I started producing, I, I produced um, four movies now, you start learning it from the other side. And so this was my first time actually directing, which brought it to a whole other level. But every single experience I had before led to this. I'd, obviously I've had no formal film training, but I feel like you know being on sets is that, hmm. I hope. But the proof will be in the pudding. It could be awful. And then you'll say, you know, you should have really gone to film school. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, I look forward to seeing all of that. <laughs> thank, thank you all so much. Did I miss anything? Is there, Kevin? Uh, I, don't think you, I, I don't think you missed anything. Yeah, I don't think you missed anything. Did they miss anything? Did, did, I miss, <laughs> did you screw anything up, Lisa? <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> I... I I have not said anything incriminating yet, so I maybe <laughs> this is a good place to stop. A good place to stop. <laughs> right. Before before I incriminate you so and you hold, yet, hold so. it against me. <laughs> well, this is it's just so awesome. Nice. Thank you, Alan. Thank You're you, so thanks. welcome. I'm glad we could get the three of you together. I know the fans were looking forward to it. I know you three were looking forward to it, which, you know, I started this really to to do it for them, but that's been the nice reward is seeing all of the actors, how happy you are to see each other. And that, you know, after a year and a half of what we've all been through, yeah. it's really nice to see people again, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was amazing to see, see you guys. Again. Yeah, what we had then and what's still here, it's genuine. Yeah, um, absolutely. Genuine. Absolutely. Well, stay well, everybody. Thanks yeah. so much for doing this. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Love you, Kevin. Love you, Lisa. Thank you, Thanks, Thank you. You're so welcome. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. Tomorrow, Adrian Zamed will be right here with me in the locker room. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and I will see you on Friday.